You know the drill. You should be trained by now. Mike, 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 what day is it? What day is it? Uh, hump day. Whoop, whoop. That is great. It's actually Wednesday, too, so I only do that on Wednesdays for you guys. Anyway, back in New York, we had a radio station, they had to whip them out Wednesdays. And, oh, I'm, I'm letting my secret show. Um, yeah. So, anyway, I'm a little, as you can tell, I'm, I'm in slightly better spirits now. Um, not because of this this came in the mail. Uh, Micromark, same stuff. Professional plastic welder. Same stuff? It says it's good for lots of stuff. So that means different stuffs. Many, th many stuffs. So it says it's good on styrene, butyrate, ABS, and acrylic, lucite, or plexiglass. So it'll glue, glue most of these, most things to most things. Wish I had this for my little tab mod for the upper... Uh, turret. But either way, no. What I'm excited is, so when, when Edo Armor ships something, it gets here a day early. Whoa, what's this? Yep, yep, yep. Daryl Turner plopped this in priority mail for me. And, uh, we have ourselves here the, uh, famous Hentech idler system. This is what I believe will fix all of my problems. No. <laughs> it won't fix any of my problems. I mean, it'll fix, it'll fix the 286's problems, um, most likely, uh, according to my educated guesses. Um, yeah, so that, that looks, that looks just damn skookum. That's what the guy AV up in Canada says. He says, it looks skookum. I have to Google the skookum word. I don't know what it means. I could be saying something completely awful in Canadese. Um, but either way, so we got this guy in. Uh, my order from Axel's Model Bow in Germany. Again, the only fault I could give Axel's is using a service that at some point involves the U.S. Postal Service when it comes to international packages. The post office, they're crappy enough for domestic stuff, but it usually gets there. Usually. And if it is late, it's a day or two. No, they're, they're international. Once, well, oh my God, forget it. So it was in Jersey City, uh... Uh, foreign center, and that was the 22nd, and then today, it's now the 28th, 9th? I don't know, what the, it's whatever. Many days later, it's now at the regional Jersey City facility, so still no estimated day delivery. <sighs> you know, sometimes they surprise me, and the crap just shows up quicker than I thought after a long delay like this, um, but, I God, I hope this stuff gets here for the weekend. We have a long weekend coming up, it's going to be Labor Day, if you're not here in the States. Labor Day is a day off in celebration of everyone who labors. That uh, might not be right. I'm not the best with, with history. Um, better with the history of tanks and history of cars and other things I'm really interested in. But either way, Labor Day is great because there's no labor happening on that day. We will not labor. We will be off. The only thing we're going to labor to do is open and drink adult beverages. Mm. Ah, yes. Broke out the Terrapin Hops Cushioner because such a cool part came. It's almost like an unboxing. So, yeah. This also includes little stub axles with bearings of their own manufacturer to replace all, all the stuff inside the Tamiya wheels. In this case, they're going to go inside the King Kong RC wheels. Um, and, yeah, King Kong's just give me crap on the... Oh, send us photos. Send us this. Did you buy our wheels? Are you using our wheels? Why didn't you use it? Oh, God, these guys. I, I should just file a PayPal claim. I don't know. I, want, I like the chassis, though, overall. 95% of me would still use this chassis tub. Surely, just because of the cool factor that it's cast metal, the surface texture looks like cast metal, it's actually not that much heavier. It's a little heavier. It's definitely stronger than ABS in most regards. Um, and the design flaws in it could have possibly been avoided. Or they could have come up with a cheaper version of this they could have included with the kit, or something, anything, to just make the idler wheels line up properly. Um, you know, they went through all the trouble of casting that very complex casting, and they couldn't include an idler wheel arm of the correct angle to compensate for their lack of angle. I don't know, whatever. Either way, I've got to, as these, and these instructions are straight from Mr. Hen. Uh, of Hentech in, in Germany. Everything is in German. 
And, uh, you know, I'm sure we could Google Translate if this was, like, emailed in, like, a document format of some form or this was a web page. But basically it says we have to drill out the part with the the keyed hole with all the little teeth things. we got to drill that out to 10 millimeters and put this thing on and then mark our holes for the plate and then drill two little holes for the screws to go to hold the plate on, two millimeter holes. And then... Mointen Dench Ashen Lagen Figen Sugar My Full Stemmen Schrager Rank of Sorry Germans, I'm sorry, I don't Um basically it says take apart the Tamiya wheel or whatever wheel we're using, uh and use their axle and bearings inside that wheel and then put it on. Like ye you're building a model tank, you should be you should be skilled enough to complete this task with four small, not great resolution photos and just Two references to millimeter-sized things that we figured it out. Well, it, it's going to be fine. I'm going to do that, but I can't necessarily take a step bit drill to go into that aluminum bathtub. I am going to... I have a, a die grinder with some conically shaped sanding tubey things. It's for doing automotive stuff more I mean it's for doing anything where you have to grind and and you know whittle away at metal um I might I'll probably use those I might try the step bit drill but I don't know I might cause some carnage either way uh I'm gonna do that and come back with the results of that I'll BRB oh my god holy crap we've got straight idlers they line up with the road wheels oh my god there we go, Hentec idler system to the rescue. A uh, little fiddly to get installed, you know, just because you have to drill holes and stuff, and you got to be kind of precise. Um, but yeah, and and they work fine with the uh, Hong Kong RC idler wheels. I gotta say, guys, I mean, the swing arms are beautifully machined, CNC. The little torsion bar holders are. Lovely little bits. Uh, the chassis tub is just really, it's really cool. Biggest thing I can say, it's really friggin' cool because it's cast aluminum. It's got, got this nice metal texture everywhere. It, it, yeah. Do it again. I don't know. I may just go with decal MRC for everything if I had to do this over again. They sell the idlers. They sell the swing arms. They don't sell the little internal bit guys, I don't think, though, that actually connect the swing arm to the torsion bar and that would create a stress riser in that little plastic bit in the stock plastic bit um, which could potentially cause some issues but either way I mean uh, King Kong was you know being 98.5% there or whatever it is 99% there it means a lot when it's in the wrong place oh boy does it I mean that that delayed my whole build like quite quite a bit um, yeah, this is, uh, this is nice. And, and they're fully adjustable from the outside. So you can adjust track tension from the outside. Um, so you can literally just take your, take your Allen wrench and loosen one set screw here and then swing your front idler wherever the heck you need that sucker to be. I'm going to keep it in the mostly stock ish uh, location where Tamiya wants it and the nice thing is if we want to uh, you know slip the tracks on we can swing them back a little further than the Tamiya even allows and that might let us get wiggle the tracks on um, worst case scenario is is we just you know undo this little set screw at the bottom of this arm and road wheel comes right off. So, not all that hard. Pretty easy. It's going to be easy to service the tracks now as well. Like, when I want to take them on, put them off, real, you know, quickly or often, I'm not going to do that. But if you if you had the need, this allows you to just do the set screws, undo them, and pop these guys out. A couple guys have made complaints about, you know, uh, the durability of this. Not the durability of it. Uh, it holding its track tensioner arm angle settings during heavy, heavy-duty heavy-duty use, guys. I'm not talking casual RCing or general 
battling. There, there's a guy in the forum, and I, I respect every word he says. He's a very smart guy. He's like, you know, I tried it, and I found that it, the set screw, just that one set screw holding on, um, didn't always hold. They might have heard you over at Hentech, because there's some texturing on the shaft uh, that this uh, angle set screw holds into. There is a lot of machining done to that, sta that shaft where th they've got some grit on it. Maybe they added that later. But either way, um, I'm not a hardcore or off-road or battle or whatever. If he says they didn't work for him 100%, I believe him 100%. Fine. Um, in this case, I had a specific problem I was dealing with with this out-of-angle front part of this chassis. Now, could I have possibly gotten a giant C-clamp and heated up this metal here a bit at a time and, and slowly tweaked in on that C-clamp to kind of, eh, you know, pull her in? Maybe. Hindsight being 2020, I'm looking at them going, I kind of could have maybe, but then I could have gone too far and it just, you know, snapped. Castellunum can be, can be a brittle creature if you're not careful. So, that's done. Whew, boy, I'm tired. And like I said, all my other accessory bits that are gluing onto the upper part of the hull and some of the turret, uh, those are... <clears throat> Still in Jersey City, apparently. Um, the, the post office just blows. Hey, hey, at least I'm not complaining about rubber tires. I got rubber tires coming out of my ears in this tank, so I had to find something to moan about. So somebody in the comments or on the forum, you know, you just complain too much. Just, just you work. You shut up and work. Well, guess what, guys? I'm my own boss, especially down here. And I do what I say I want to do. Man, yeah, I'm a character. Your Cartman boy. I do what I want. You ain't my mama. Exactly. Um, so, there we go. That's nice. Um, I'm going to see if I can accomplish anything else tonight. Because just getting this done, I mean, it wore me out a little. I'm, I'm relieved, though, that I finally have straight idler wheels, for God's sake. Like... You know, Pinocchio, he had a, a huge... I want to be a real boy. I was like, I just want straight idler wheels. I'm not a wooden puppet living doll creature possessed by a spirit. Ew, Pinocchio's kind of scary, actually, now that you think about it. Um, that being said, there... Uh, yeah, we're looking, we're looking mighty fine over here. So we can start painting this thing. Maybe that's what I'll do tonight. I will get... Uh, should I? Yeah, I'll get some paint on this, maybe. It's something better than better than a than a kicking nards, that's for sure. Um, I'm gonna get painting. BRB. All right, guys. Um, oh, let me grab this big girl. We have a shadow coated. I didn't do highlight yet. I didn't do highlight. Uh, shadow coated NATO black. As per the Gospel of Andy, which I follow, I am one of his disciples. Um, if he starts a uh, religious colony somewhere in Arizona and asks us to all try the fruit punch, I will probably decline. I am a leader, not a follower. I follow, I don't, I lead, I follow, I follow, I learn from, but then lead in my own way, I don't know, whatever. Either way, I'm starting to get text messages from the wife. The puppy has too much energy, and we need to tire him out. And the only thing that will do that is a 5,000 milliamp stick pack in my Tamiya Big Yellow 6x6 school bus with the pool noodle and gaffer tape front bumper. Um, so he can chase it around like a maniac and, uh, and bite at its tires and bark at it and run around. He has a blast. It's really adorable watching him chase around the Tamiya Big Yellow School Bus. Everybody that sees it, they get a huge kick out of it. They're like, this is genius. How does your husband know how to do this? I'm like, I'm a hobby guy. I build things. They're like, oh my god, you know, hey. I haven't gotten requests for one from someone else yet. They probably don't even want to know how much it'll cost. They're probably like, oh, it's an RC toy. Hey, it's 50 bucks. 100 bucks. <sighs> Not even close. I mean, you guys know what these things cost. You know, you buy them kit, and you gotta buy the paint, and you gotta buy a radio, and you gotta buy a speed controller, and then you're probably gonna upgrade the stock motor, and I went with the torque tune, and then, you know, I went with the, the, the semi-transparent chassis, and the orange and yellow gears for the GF chassis series for the Tamiya's, I did full ball bearings in it, 
Um, you know, the pool noodle was a dollar. That was the cheapest part of the whole thing. The gaffer tape cost more. Um, I don't know how much gaffer tape was. It was like eight bucks, ten bucks for a good roll of gaffer tape on, on Amazon. So we have a shadow coat, um, and I am delighted to say our lower hull and drivetrain is finally 100% complete, and I'm happy with it. That's a big accomplishment, being happy with it. These front idlers, that was quite the trial by fire and drill bit and money. <laughs> I have yet to see if uh, King Kong's going to compensate me in any way. They offered me $10 so far for my trouble. $10 for your trouble. $150 chassis plus shipping. $10 for your trouble. That didn't even cover the shipping. So, Hong Kong RC, you can kiss my rosy, speckled, pale, pink petard. No thank you. I am going to go pit bull on you, I think. This is not nice of you guys. But what was nice was Robert Hearn and Daryl Turner of Ito Armor uh, getting me out this Hentech idler system. Uh, it went in a treat, um, little fiddling, little little changes, I mean, because it's going on the King Kong chassis. Surprisingly, though, it doesn't care what chassis it's on. I think if you put it on the Tamiya chassis, this thing's dead level and perfectly vertically plumb and everything. I think it just pulls the stock chassis basically vertical, just like this was to begin with. So this is the perfect solution. If you're building this tank with this King Kong chassis, you need the Hentech idler system. Um to have true running idlers in the front. Otherwise, whatever, man, run them crooked. People have said, ah, I won't care. It's an RC. T it trust you. You know what? There's ball bearings inside these idler axles. These ball bearings like to be uh, in a single plane of thrust, okay? Ball bearings, they're either thrust bearings where they're meant to have pressure put on them like this while they're rotating, okay? Or they're roller bearings where they're only meant to have pressure exerted downwards, forwards, or backwards on against directly against the ball race, perpendicular to the to the surface and outer and inner surface of the bearing. Okay? Ball bearings do not like any lateral or angular thrust on them. They just want to be they just want to roll. Okay? A roller blade wheel. Just imagine that, okay? Imagine you had a crooked you had a crooked roller blade wheel and all the others are straight and one was crooked just by a few degrees, that ball bearing is going to fry way quicker than any of the other ball bearings. So for anyone that says, eh, it wouldn't want, no. There's not enough play. In, I mean, it's a Tamiya, and Hong Kong did a pretty good job copying this Tamiya chassis. Tamiya's have very tight tolerances. It's, it's just like modern uh, automotive vehicles, Tesla excluded. Your tolerances are all over the friggin' place. I mean, you build cars in tents. I don't want to get into the Tesla bashing. I think they are amazing, cool cars. I would buy one today if I had the funds to do so. I'm just saying. Sometimes their panel gaps are a bit off. Sometimes, you know, a bitter piece isn't quite fit perfectly. Um, but overall, you need to, you know, use a thing in its intended manner. Okay? Um, when When two people are getting together to make a baby... And one or both of them comes off kilter while the making is in progress. You go, oh my god, ow! It's not meant to bend when it's in the process of the the reproduction. It's not meant to bend. People go to the hospital for that. Ball bearings should be run eh, one plane of thrust. Okay. Then you have tapered needle bearings, like in the wheel bearings of some cars. Those are meant to have inward and outward thrust put on them while they have vertical force on them while rolling. They're holding up the car, so they're being pushed up from the ground, from down from the car onto the ground, and then you're, t you're cornering and turning, so they have to take side-to-side -side loads. If we had tapered needle bearings in these guys, I wouldn't be as concerned if they were slightly off-kilter, because cars run camber, okay? Negative, positive, never, well, almost never positive, but there's always negative camber of some form, Especially, and then in the caster, when you're steering, they turn even more negative camber. So their ball bearings need to deal with lateral thrust as well as longitudinal thrust. 
these are just straight up ball bearings like rollerblade wheels. They're not meant to deal with that. So that's why I'm, I'm I went through so much damn pain to make sure my idler wheels were 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 plumb with all the other road wheels. I mean, listen, within a a it a degree is fine. I mean, tolerances from auto manufacturers there's always like a half a degree to one degree tolerance with the alignment specifications, you know, and that's that also tire wear. If you have too much camber, and that's what these things in these things had friggin' these had positive camberns and negative or negative yeah they they all they, the the rubber would have eventually worn out if they were on pavement, even with the the the, the resin tracks in play, the camber would have caused uneven tire wear, um and and binding and stresses and things we don't want even in an RC toy. You guys. When you when you when you invest this amount of money and time into building an RC toy, uh, it, you want it to be right. You want it to be done proper. Okay, so I nitpick the engineering things a lot on this stuff. And again, I, I should have probably gone to school to become an electrical or mechanical engineer of some form, or or just gotten into that trade of machining and engineering, and it would have suited me well probably. Um, I've been called an engineer for many, many years, which was a superfluous IT term, you know, a network systems engineer, network engineer, and they had to, they, they've been curtailing the use of engineer uh, a lot lately just because of legalities and, 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 and you know, uh, 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 Fair Labor Standards Act in the, in the U.S. at least and probably elsewhere. But either way, we have everything... F- Good. This is all true. Everything spins nicely. Everything's on ball bearings. Um, everything's getting rubber tires, which I'm super stoked about. Um, so that's all that. Um, before I paint to this, just just in case anyone didn't notice, I did mask off the uh, the little shafts for the for the shocks here with some uh, painter's tape, just so I could keep that nice shiny metal of the shafts um, where you know the way it's supposed to be. But that's it, guys. I am, uh, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little tired. I'll admit it. Oh, a little tired. I mean, it's hump day. It is hump day. Whoop, whoop. Uh, but other than that, <clears throat> that is why we've been spending so much damn time, effort, money, grief, loss of sleep, um, because of this King Kong chassis. But, this, if I was going to just do this from jump, and I already had the Hentex, and I was like, I'm doing the Hentex, I might have never noticed the tolerance issue where the angles aren't quite perfect here. It's only because I used a machined metal uh, Tamiya-style idler arm that mimicked this that it showed me that the angle of the dangle was crooked. If I started with the Hentec, I would have been like, oh, other than some poor tapping in some of these screw holes, this chassis is perfect. And maybe everybody else that's built the damn thing used the Hentec. I don't know. I can't. And there's no negative reviews on the eBay auction for this chassis. And I left a negative review. I left a, a one star out of five. There was three five-star reviews for this chassis. I left my one-star review. I have yet to see it on their auction. They definitely are censoring negative reviews on the King Kong RC auctions. Um, so just be warned. I love the chassis overall. Um, their, their metal return rollers and metal return roller arm setups are friggin' slick. Their CNC aluminum swing arms are beautiful. The CNC spring, uh, torsion spring holders are beautiful. Their torsion springs look just right. Torsion spring caps, great. The threading in this chassis, F minus guys F F F, and then this issue with the front idler arm mounts, definitely a problem. Other than that, other than a little mild sanding and filing to make things fit just so, which is really minimal. Um, I still, you know, I'm more angry with them because they didn't immediately go, oh, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We're so sorry for your problems. Would you like a full refund? You could return the item. We'll pay for the shipping. We didn't realize our design was defective. We haven't heard this before, but maybe nobody's gone into the detail. No, 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 no. They just go right on the defensive, and we want pictures, and we want proof. And You know what, guys? I've sent them pictures. I've sent them links to my videos. They don't care. 
You know, if I said, fine, give me the $10, I doubt they'd even send that at this point. Um, it would, it would, it would show some level of, of culpability on their part to even comply with that now. But either way, uh, yeah, there we go. There's my complaints. Uh, you can't get one video out of me without me com bitching and moaning like a little scalded schoolgirl. Um, so yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, Hentech and Ito Armor to the rescue, getting these guys working up. Uh, other than that, damn. I'm, I'm very happy with, with this 2A6 overall. Again, I got, I got some little ac accessories. I don't do a ton of aftermarket parts normally. This tank, I went full hog with aftermarket stuff, and I'm paying the price. Um, but from, uh, Axel's model, I have a tiny, itty bitty little handles and latches and little tiny things that I really never bother with, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do it up a bit, you know, this is the YouTube channel, we'll, we'll do the, do extra little bits, bring some attention to some of the aftermarket vendors, uh, that provide us with, with quality aftermarket options, we drum their business up at all, I'm not sponsored, but hell, if, if, you know, more people are going to them, and the business starts getting a little better for them, they're gonna take care of the rest of us tankers with more parts that we want, so it's just a circle of life there. I want to be part of the ecosystem in a positive way. Anyone getting dizzy? Yeah, my fingers are just covered in paint. I am a messy painter. Um, I don't care about getting my hands dirty. So with that said, um, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to go upstairs. And now, I love my puppy, but damn. He could tire you the hell out sometimes, and I'm already pretty tired. So we'll see. Um... I'm going to go go drive around my, my, my big king yellow 6x6 for him, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. That was from Demolition Ranch. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Is it something like that? That's a little overboard. I can't profess love for strangers on the internet. It just It's going to get me in trouble. But I like you, and I'll see you next time. Later.